Hello everyone and welcome to Mail Slurp. This video is a basic introduction and tutorial about what Mail Slurp is and how you can use it in your messaging automations and workflows. Let's briefly explain what Mail Slurp is. Mail Slurp is a platform for getting email and SMS where they need to go. You can use Mail Slurp to create real phone numbers and emails instantly and control them in code, tests and online dashboards. Mailslurp is free for personal use, so create an account at app.mailslurp.com and sign in to get started. So when you first log into a Mailslurp dashboard, you're greeted with the home page. Here we can see the usage for my account and my latest emails and latest SMS text messages. If I click on the API access tab, I can see my API key and code examples for various languages. So if you want to integrate Mailslurp into your code or tests, use this panel with the API key to do so. You can click the integrations dropdown and find other frameworks and languages, and you can open the documentation and examples pages for extensive documentation and example projects. Mailslurp also works as a no-code email and SMS solution, so you can use Mailslurp without any programming knowledge. In the rest of this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first thing you might want to do is create an email address. We can do that in the inboxes page. Here on the left hand side there is a sidebar and I can access all the items in Mailslurp using this. So if I click inboxes, I can see the inboxes I currently have. And I can create a new inbox by clicking this big green button. Now on this page I'm presented with the inbox creation tool. There are a few options to cover here. The first is the address type. It can either be randomized, which means Mailslurp will assign a new random email address to you, or it can be custom using your own custom domain. We can also designate a lifetime, so either the inbox will be permanent or it will be temporary and expire after some time. I'm going to click next and an inbox will be created for me. You can see when the inbox page loads that a new email address has been assigned to it. Below we can see received emails, sent and webhook events. In the top panel we can gain access to SMTP IMAP details, forwarding, repliers, routing rules and webhooks. So let's send an email from this inbox. I'm going to copy the email address and click on compose and now I'm going to send an email to myself. So I paste in the email address and say this is a test. For the body, I'll say this is a test email and I'll attach a file. All right, let's send that now. And we're presented with a sent email confirmation. I will navigate back to the inbox. And in the inbox, I can see the email I just sent. So if we click that, we can open up this email in the email viewing page. So the email viewing page is an important tool in Mailslurp with a lot of functionality. If you send an email to a Mailslurp inbox, an analysis is performed on the content. Here we can see the subject line, the from, to, and further details. In the HTML preview, we can see the rendered email body, and we can change the size of our preview window to mimic other devices such as mobile and tablet. We can also access the raw content and the SMTP message. At the bottom of the screen, we can see the attachments and any webhook events that were fired for this email. Looking back at the top of the page, in these upper tabs, we can see the HTML CSS support for the email. So if I open this, I can view the percentage of clients that fully support my email body and I can filter by platform and category. So here with this simple example, we can see 100% client support across the mail clients and platforms I have selected. We can also perform a content check. This will check for any broken links, broken images, or spelling mistakes in the email. We can also analyze the spam rating and deliverability of the email. This is really important if you're sending campaigns to ensure that your email is delivered correctly. Here we can see that it has passed the spam test, virus test, SPF and DKIM, but we have a problem with our DMARC. We can also perform HTML validation and analyze the headers that were attached to the email message. Now that we have covered creating inboxes and viewing emails, let's talk a little bit about email automations. 
So when we open the inbox sidebar, we can see various add-ons related to email addresses. So we can create custom domains. We can also define forwarding rules. Forwarding rules allow us to define a set of criteria that will match emails and forward them to destinations. Here you can see I'm matching for an inbox and the target recipients with a pattern wildcard. So I could say that anything with the support in it should be forwarded to a different inbox. Repliers allow us to create canned message responses that will trigger when an email matches certain criteria. Rules allow us to block and allow certain emails from being sent or received. And aliases let us forward or proxy emails through hidden email addresses without revealing the sender or recipient. Another common area of automation is webhooks. Webhooks allow us to hook into any event within the MailSlurp system and forward that event to our server. So we could match for new emails, account-wide or inbox scoped, and then forward those to a server running in our system. This means we don't have to constantly poll the MailSlurp API for new emails and attachments. You can see an example payload on the webhook create page that gives us an indication of the payload that will be sent to your server. Lastly, MailSlip also provides email verification. You can enable this when sending and receiving or upload lists for bulk verification. Now let's cover phone numbers and SMS. Phone numbers in MailSlip require a plan. So once you have added a plan to your account, you can create a new phone number. So here on the phone number creation page, I can select a region and how many phone numbers I wish to add. Here, I'm gonna add one number in the Australian region. Once the phone number has been added, I can open the phone number and view the received text messages. If I click this button to the right, I can send a text message to my phone number. And in the text SMS panel below, I can see the message has arrived. When I open the message, I can see the body of the text and information about the sender and receiving number. If you're part of a team and want to grant access to MailSlurp to other members in your organization, use the team panel in the sidebar. Here we can create an organization and we can add access portals with SAML single sign-on or federated login. I can also manage my users and grant permissions. Some features in MailSlurp require a plan, so I can click upgrade in the sidebar or here at the top right and I'm presented with a range of plans. I can pick my subscription term and my currency and I can see here the pay as you go usage. So each plan has a base amount that is included, listed here. And then extensions for extra emails, user seats, SMS verification, and so on. So now that we have covered the basic features of the MailSlip dashboard, let's create a Hello World code example to demonstrate usage of MailSlip in a programmatic environment. Okay, so here I am in Visual Code Studio, and I have a basic package.json file type module, and I have a test.mjs. Now, if I go back to the dashboard and select the JavaScript integration, it gives me some example code. I can simply copy this, go back to my test file and paste it like so. We can see on line two an import. Let's uncomment that and an installation script. So I'm gonna copy the installation and paste it into my terminal. And it says npm i dash dash save mail slurp dash client. All right, that's installed. So after the script, let's just log out the inbox email address. I can do that by writing console.log and then say email address equals inbox.email address. All right, now let's run the script and see what happens. So I can type node test.mjs and we can see it's printed to the console email address equals 89e8, et cetera, at mailsip.xyz. Now, if I run this again, you can see the email address has changed. This is because we're creating a new disposable email address each time we run this. So why don't we go a little bit further and send an email and then receive it and log out the content. So what we want to do is use the MailSlurp instance, like so, to send an email. Now we want to pass in our inbox ID and some send email options. So I'm going to say to, we're going to send an email to itself. We'll put in a subject and a body. We'll send some HTML. 
and say hello mum and then say is html true all right now let's log saying that we have sent the email and then let's run our test and see what happens okay it's created the email address and the email has been sent great okay so the last step is we want to receive the email so for that we can use the wait for method so we can say const email equals mail slurp dot wait for latest email so this is a special feature of MailSerp that allows us to hold the connection open until an email is received. So we can pass in the inbox ID, a wait time, I'm going to put two minutes in milliseconds, and true. That means we only want unread emails. Okay, and then we can just log out the email. We can say email received, and then pass the email, and we'll add in a wait there. Now let's run this again and see what happens. Email is sent, now we're waiting, and the email has been received. So you can see if I scroll up in the terminal, the full email body and headers have been printed to the console. So there you go, that's a basic example for how to set up Mail Slurp in JavaScript. And for more information, tutorials and examples, click on the documentation link or the examples link. On the examples page, we have a range of starter projects in common libraries and frameworks. And on the documentation section, we have documentation for every official client and language we support, which is a big range. So for instance, if I want to learn about Python, I can click that and we can see here videos and documentation about how to set up MailSlurp with Python. So I hope this video has helped you to understand MailSlurp and to get started using the system. If you need help at any time, please reach out to us. You can find a support widget in the app and websites at the bottom right of your page. If you click this, you'll be connected with support. Thanks for watching this video and good luck building. Thanks.